Okay, so I'm Jo, um, I'm just at Jo Badge to tweet me. Um, I realised I tweeted my link, I've put this on the blog, got the wrong hashtag on it, so I will retweet it when I've just finished, okay? So, um, so I want to talk to you about using QR codes for paired reading. This is something that I've done with my year four class. Um, when I first started teaching women teaching two years, and a year ago I took my own iPad into the class, it was the only iPad in school, and I had one iPad and 36 children. And I very quickly realised that they all wanted to be on it all of the time, uh, and so I tried to make out ways of eking it out and sharing it around between everybody. <coughs> And actually what's turned out to sort of needs most with one iPad and a lot of children has worked as a really good way of leaking skills through and bleeding them through throughout the year so that children can pick things up slowly and steadily throughout the year and we build quite a lot of skills in with what they're using. So in my, paired, in my guided reading session, um, I do a carousel activity, so there are some children doing independent tasks and I have a little timetable and every half term, every child gets to go on in a pair and work as a pair on the iPad. And I feed different tasks through, and this is the first one that we started with this year. So let's see if I can go forward, okay? So the first thing that we did was to get the children to use a little combination of apps to go and sneak and steal a reading book from a Key Stage 1 classroom. Obviously the teachers knew that they were going to steal the book, but it makes it much more exciting if you can go and steal something than if you're allowed to go and take it. So off they snuck and they go and, and steal um, a, a fairly short um, Key Stage 1 book. They then use the iPad and Audio Boot, which is a free app to record sound, to record themselves reading it. They worked out their own little systems for telling the children to which book it was, how to turn the page, when to turn the page and so on. Some of them made noises, some of them clapped their hands, some of them just said, turn the page! Um, and literally, and um, then once it's recording on Audioboo, um, I've got Audioboo linked to our class blog, so it automatically gets published as an audio file on the class blog, and then they can take the URL from the class blog and turn it into a QR code. Okay, it's fairly straightforward. It sounds quite a lot of stuff to do, but they got to do this in a 20-minute guided reading session, and we usually got it done. So they were pretty efficient by the time we've finished. Now, any child needs to record an audio boot or make a QR code in my class, they can all do it straight away because they've learned how to do it the first half term. So a QR code, if you've not seen one before, is these funny little barcodes. Uh, and when you scan one with an iPad and use an iPad um, free app, iPod scanner, it takes you straight to the web page. So what that meant was we could print these QR codes out, okay? They made a little instruction manual even for the Key Stage 1 children so they knew how to do it. You hold it. Uh, the app over the picture and then it links you straight to the page where the audio is recorded. It meant that the younger children could pick up their book, find the printed barcode in there, open the book up, scan it and listen to the story being read by another child. Okay? Uh, it's been great for some of my less able readers who've been feeling that they've had a lot of success reading out to younger children. The younger children have loved it because they've got another child to listen to. Um, so we can have a little listen to one, so we can get that open so that you can hear Eden. Uh, so these are published straight onto the blog. So there's not that much work on my part in that it's publishing straight to the blog. A uh, few children found they needed to record, they had like three, they got really involved in the stories and they got very expressive and so they had like three audio boos because there's a three minute time limit I think on audio boo. But generally I tried to encourage them to do a short one so if we can just have a quick listen, we won't listen to all of it. They went with this simple option. to pause it there. They go on quite a bit. Obviously, they read the whole book. So it was a pair of them working. They'd worked out to use different voices, got loads of expression in there, a little bit too into it at one point because they needed to turn the page and they forgot where they stopped and got it sorted out. So um, they then also went on on the blog and commented it. It's a good way for them to go. My children have loved listening back to these themselves. We've had lots of comments about how people are going. Okay. Have I got a second to talk about algorithms? I'm doing on time, Josie. Okay. Um, I'm recently just going to start as an ICT coordinator and um, going into a school where people have been really worried about the new computing curriculum and the language in it and this horrendous words like algorithms and so on 
Um, probably a fairly tech determinate crowd given the people that come to these teach meets. Uh, but if you haven't already found those two sites for getting some information and getting things in a really simple way, um, I taught a quick lesson uh, looking at algorithms, which is basically just an instruction with a decision in it. Um, and I got some children to just sit down with a set of keys and a padlock, only one set, one key fit the padlock. They went through a process to try and um, work out which key they needed um, to open the padlock. Does the key work? No, try it again. Just made a very simple picture to show me how the algorithm or the instructions worked. And by the end of it, we'd learned what an algorithm was. They could all tell me what an algorithm was. Very straightforward and simple. Um, the idea for that came from Simon Horton. Simon Horton's ICT lessons, the URL's just cut off there. I'll make sure you get the link. Um, his ICT computing lessons are great, really simple to follow, very clearly differentiated with a sort of a good, better, best kind of approach. Um, and Phil Bag, um, absolutely fantastic resources um, with lots of great videos, lots of stuff on Scratch, um, lots of stuff. His planning is all there. It's really easy to follow, really well explained. Um, and if you haven't seen Phil Bag's Sandwich Bot, I recommend you go and have a look at it. Search for Sandwich Bot on YouTube. Um, and it's him just being a, a, a machine and doing exactly what the children say to make a jam sandwich. So when they say, pick up bread, he picks up the bread like this, and then they say, put on butter, and he just gets the butter and dumps it on. And they'll go, no, that's not right. And so to get their instructions really clear. Okay, if you need to get hold of me, I am just Joe Badge at Twitter. Um, I blog at WordPress, that's my own um, account, but also my class have um, a Blogspot account that we do our class blogs on. Thank you.